Welcome to the Left Shoe Politics Podcast. My name is Rick Shoe. I am your host today, and this is an emergency podcast. We've never done what you know an emergency podcast on Left Shoe, but I'll be honest with you guys, I was not expecting uh, Doug Jones to defeat Roy Moore in this uh, <laughs> Senate race in Alabama. And it, the moment that the results came in, and just so everyone knows. It is December 12th, 2017 at 11 p.m. Central Standard Time. And uh, the news just came over that Roy Moore will not will not uh, accept defeat and is now challenging the results. But we'll get to that in a moment. So anyway, I did not think that this was even going to happen. But once it did, I just started texting uh, Jeremy and Michael, obviously, the, my left shoe partners and Zaki Hassan, who's here, we'll give him a proper introduction in a moment. Other friends and just said, anybody available to just, let's just talk. And fortunately, uh, Zaki was, took the call to action. So anyway, so Zaki Hassan, without further ado, how are you, sir? I'm doing very well. Certainly, uh, it's been an eventful night. I'm uh, feeling more jubilant than I expected to just mere hours ago. I am as well, and I'm exhausted, just so everyone knows. I'm, I'm usually... If, if if I'm if I'm not working because I'm in the restaurant business, I, I'm in bed by ten. With my wife and I are out, <laughs> so I'm I'm tired. But uh, I stayed up for this, and I certainly wanted to get some content up about this election because this is a really big deal, and it's a big deal because. And Zachy, just kind of chime in here, man. We'll just we'll just we'll just let it rip. But as I understand it, there hasn't been a a, a Democrat in the state of Alabama that's won anything in terms of on a statewide, much less a senatorial race, in 25-plus years. Yeah, statewide office. 1992 was the last time, so so we're talking uh, the Clinton era. The Clinton, yeah, it's, that was, and that was a very different time. Uh, this, is a, uh, this is now the place that we're at is what I would call Trump's America. Uh, it's a place I don't like. It's toxic. It's racist. Uh, consumed with bigotry sexism etc and that's i'm not being hyperbolic i mean let's break down roy moore for just a moment i mean here's a guy who well he, he's all of the above he's all of the above <laughs> i mean like literally man again this isn't just name calling i mean zachy let's let's go through his greatest hits first of all he doesn't think that muslims should be able to serve in the united states government whatsoever because he's a bigot he also thinks that gays are uh, an abomination, and that uh, gay marriage and gay, really gay activity, period, homosexuality should be illegal, and that gays should be thrown uh, in jail. Because he's a homophobe. Because he's a homophobe. He said just recently, and, and I'm going to paraphrase, but you guys can Google this. I'm not making this up. He was asked what he thought was America's best time, and really the catalyst for this question was this whole Make America Great Again BS that's Trump's... Uh, when when was America great? When was America great? And let's all face it, I, we've, Zachy, you and I have known this for the better part of two years, that great means white. It just does. Yeah. And, and whether they want to come out and say it, that's exactly what they mean. And Roy Moore echoes that because when he was asked, he said that it was during slavery. Yeah. Asked by an African American, by the way, and said during slavery, and, and had this little <laughs> weird caveat, like, or, 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 you know, it was like, a, well, you know, not because of slavery necessarily. I don't mean that. It just, it just families were united and stronger than ever. See, see, you'd think that you'd say, well, America would have been great, but there was slavery, which immediately makes it not great. That's like the normal response, right? Uh, but he was like, well, there was that slavery thing. But on the plus side, you know, white families uh, were mostly sticking together. Black families uh, were being torn apart by those white families. Uh, but let's talk about the white families. Like that's that's the, all the implicit nonsense that that was bubbling right under the surface of everything he said. It sucked for everyone else and really even including women since they weren't allowed to vote. But, uh, you know, for white dudes. It was everything was pretty okay, man, and that's yeah, that, yeah. for for the Roy Moores uh, throughout history, you know. Uh, I'm going back in his lineage. I'm sure that his family was doing just fine. Well, and listen, and I hate to say this in stereotype, especially since I'm from Texas, but it is it's a little shocking that this happened in Alabama. I mean, even in my state, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously living in a red state, but Texas is has a better history than Alabama in a lot of ways in terms of uh, electing 
Uh, I, I hate saying Democrats because it sounds like I'm just being a Democrat DNC guy. That's not what this is about. But it, it right now, unfortunately, the reality is we have a two-party system. And right now, especially now in, in 2017, the Democratic Party and the Republican Party are so stark. I mean, it is oil and water more so than I think it's ever been in my life. It is because right now the Republican Party is the party of Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Yep. And Steve Bannon. Well, it was. Maybe not after today. Maybe people will finally realize what a irrelevant hack he is because this was his guy. And what an embarrassing defeat to hand a, a Senate seat that was held by Jeff Sessions, I might add, uh, Attorney, yeah. G- Attorney General Jeff Sessions, and hands it over to a Democrat. And 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 by, now I wouldn't say healthy margins. It was a very close race, but we're looking, I think, about twenty five thousand votes, and it's very yeah. it's very significant. So anyway, so back to the Alabama thing. So it was shocking to me because you just don't expect something like that to happen. And quite frankly, what I was afraid of is that all the news about his pedophilia ac- accusations, because we haven't even gotten to that yet. I mean, all the stuff that we listed before were things that were actually empirically true, things he has said and done. These are ac- yeah. these are accusations. I, for one, do believe the women, at least most of them, if not all of them. And uh, I'm, I'm guessing 95 to 98% of what they're saying is accurate. Uh, the, the point is, I think that he's... He was lusting after young girls when he was a district attorney in his thirties. I think the man's a pig, but yeah. but but those are accusations. So we had, but we hadn't even brought those up yet. So what I was afraid of is, that, <laughs> yeah, right. So what I was afraid of, Zachy, was this: I was afraid that that narrative was actually going to backfire, and that the whole fake news and these are just people out to get uh, Roy Moore and Republicans and conservatives and Christians that that was going to embolden them. It was going to increase the turnout of the white voter. And quite frankly, I was predicting that he was going to win by five or ten points. Well, what did you? What were your predictions on this? How surprised were you tonight? I mean, I the, the pragmatist in me was saying that, like, I, I was stealing myself for Roy Moore winning because uh, I didn't see any reason to think Alabama would, would do otherwise. I did hold out a hope, uh, the, the spark, uh, uh, of resistance, if you will, uh, <laughs> um, nice Star that, Wars uh, line there. I like it. Uh, a little timely, right? I figured I'd drop that. <laughs> uh, I, I, I held out hope that what we would see tonight could potentially be an indicator of a headwind leading into next year. And I know, I, let me rephrase, I strongly believe that uh, ne- next year's midterms are going to be an anti-Trump wave. And so I, I my sense, I, I was always putting the cart before the horse a little bit, where I was like, I believe there is an anti-Trump wave coming in the midterms. The question is, uh, will Alabama be the the forerunner to that wave? Yeah, right. Is this, is, right. Is this foreshadowing? Or, yeah, and 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 if you want to, you know, uh, uh, historically speaking, you can look at uh, Scott Brown's election in the special election in, in Massachusetts in two thousand nine. Mm-hmm. You know, for for Teddy Kennedy's seat, uh, that presaged, you know, in twenty ten, just the blowout in in both houses uh, where the Republicans took over. So. If we're playing parallels, certainly it's historically speaking, the midterms presages the party in power losing seats. So I, I believe that that history is, is is you know a prologue in this case. Yeah, absolutely. They have yeah. a there. There's a, it's much more challenging for the Democrats right now versus the uh, Republicans and the, the Tea Party movement of 2010, only because. Of how many seats they have to take over, but here's the thing: is that because if correct me if my math is wrong here, but let's just assume they won as many seats as the Republicans did in 2010. Would that even put them over the edge, or they need to win more than that? I think it was a little more, like by two or three, which is significant. But regardless, it's an uphill battle. But I it, mean, I mean, the, look, the, you know, look at the the margin right now, right? We're it, with with Roy Moore uh, not getting. 
uh, Sessions' old seat. I I don't know. By the way, how does this work? Does does like Doug Jones show up next week and he's a senator from Alabama? Does is it January? How does it work? Well, I, I actually don't. That's a great question, and it's one I don't necessarily have the answer for. But I know this: this afternoon, Mitch McConnell was on record saying that regardless of the outcome, this uh, whoever wins tonight's not getting sworn in until January. Okay, so there we go. So my guess, uh, my guess is, is that they it was for it was twofold. If Roy Moore wins, that was going to give them time to have some sort of a plan on how to deal with that that train wreck for them because that yeah. would have been awful for them. And, yes. Um, and probably would have been good long term for the DNC for yes. Roy Moore to win. I don't care. I don't care. I don't want that to be rewarded just for the potential that it'll backfire and have negative ramifications down the road. Yeah, and and you know, I I really the the political uh, strategizing sometimes is so uh, preposterous, right? Because let us not forget that. Donald Trump was Team Clinton's chosen candidate. He was who they wanted to face off against because they thought he would be the easiest to beat. And that blew up in their face. So I'm kind of like, you know what? Run run the campaign you should run no matter what. Right. That's a good like, point. Like don't, don't, don't uh, uh, try to position yourself and, and triangulate and everything else. Uh, you know, and, and not to, not to relitigate the 2016 thing, but look, look at the, look at what we saw in Alabama, right? I mean, I mean, obviously it helps that, that, I mean, Roy Moore was a catastrophe, right? But, but all of the debits that he had working against him were the same things that Donald Trump had working against him and yet he won. So let's not say that like he, Doug Jones didn't win because Roy Moore was a terrible candidate. Uh, is my point. Uh, Doug Jones won because he wasn't a terrible candidate. That's not to say he was he was a great candidate necessarily, but he his backstory uh, didn't really have any major potholes that I can think of. Uh, but more than anything, it it was a referendum on Trumpism. Absolutely, Make right? No and and mm-hmm. yeah, no, go ahead. No, no, I was I was I, I was just going to say, and let's make no mistake about it: the black turnout tonight was far bigger than what was anticipated yeah. and that's what won this election and I mean, and and I'm curious what the, what the female turnout was too uh, you know uh, how many women young women college educated women uh, uh, wanted to make their voices heard I don't I don't know what those numbers are but I'm very curious yeah I am I am as well it'll be interesting for us to really look at that when we're uh, said and done here uh, like we said at the very beginning guys we're we are doing this on the fly uh, Zachy is on his phone if there's a uh, as far as production quality, I know this is not one of our better podcasts, but we're we're just making this work because we just wanted to talk <laughs> and we wanted to just get something on record, and we're just coming out of our skin. So we don't uh, some of the stuff we're not even privy to. Like I said, right now it's eleven thirteen p.m. Central Standard Time, the night of the election. Things are you know Roy Moore is not even conceded the election yet, so that's funny. But uh, you know you know I'll tell you, Rick, what what I'm thinking about is how in the last two three weeks. Trump tied himself. He handcuffed himself, you know, defiant one style to Roy Moore. And like he went all in and it's what what's striking me again and again is he had nothing to gain and everything to lose by doing that. What a bonehead thing. And what does it come down to his ego because of the fact that he, too, had been accused and he wanted to prove that that, you know, people will buy uh, somebody just as terrible as him. He is now on record. And listen, yeah. the, the list of uh, atrocious, vile things this man has said and done is just endless. We could be here all night. But just, and, and not even his current tweet storm that he did today, mind you, but anyway, but he is now on record, Zach. <laughs> he has embraced, endorsed a candidate that says, Zaki Hassan, you can never serve... In the United States government, you sir, because, you, <laughs> because you're a Muslim. He, sure. He's on record saying, "My uncle James, uncle James, you are a gay man, and you should be in jail for your abomination and your actions and your lifestyle." He's on record supporting a man who thinks these things. We haven't even gotten again right now to the pedophilia stuff. This is just stuff on record. Did you hear yeah. the absolutely anti-Semitic? 
nonsense that his wife said yesterday. And, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, they said, you know, hey, you th- everybody, we're getting accused of being anti-Semitic, that we don't like Jews. Well, I just want everyone to know right now that one of our attorneys is a Jew. Wow. I mean, these people are yeah. – who says that? <laughs> Right. That, that's that's insane. So my best are Jewish. <laughs> like our attorney is a Jew. one of our attorneys is a Jew. They couldn't even have like all. If they were like, if, if you're gonna do this stereotype and you're gonna try to be like, yeah. have your token black friend, Jew friend, can you at least maybe make more than just one Jewish? Just you know, right. like, just w- well, one, it's, one it's of it's our like attorneys say- is a Jew. Come on, it's like saying like, oh, oh I'm I'm not uh, against uh, Hispanics. I, a Mexican person mows my lawn. You know, like, like, oh, like really? These are these are honestly, uh, you know, th- these are garbage people. Look, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, absolutely. it's it's absolutely they're garbage people. The, it's it's disgusting. Uh, and what we saw tonight, assuming you know, there's no shenanigans between now and the final certification of the vote, because as you said, Roy Moore is still refusing to concede. I, I have a feeling this too shall pass, and I have a feeling, by the way, that the spineless. Uh, uh, establishment people in the RNC are breathing a big sigh of relief, but uh, you know they are just as despicable. Mitch McConnell, Paul Ryan, uh, you know, talk about handing over any character. Like you know, imagine like what did you have to lose by standing firm on I do not think he should be in the Senate. That's all Mitch McConnell had to say. And to his credit. Well, and I'm going to tread lightly here, but to his credit, he did say when the allegations came out that he believed, when they came out, he believed these women and that Roy yeah. Moore should step down. But as time went on and he it was apparent that he was not going to step down and then RNC started to back him kind of, you know, behind the behind the curtain financially that came out. And then yeah. and then Bannon hit the trails and then Trump started to do his thing with him and, and go all in. What did what did Mitch McConnell say then? Well, it's up to the voters of Alabama. No, Mitch McConnell, yeah. it's up to you as the leader of the Republican Senate to stand yeah. up and say no, absolutely not. This is unacceptable, and be a Mitt Romney. Now, Mitt Romney is not serving right now, so I don't know if he would have had that that bravery that he had. But I, I still admire uh, his position that he's taken just over the last seventy two hours and the tweets yeah. that he's put out. So, yeah, I mean, uh, hi- history judges you, you know, and and I I think when when we look at the 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 texture of this election, I think it's fascinating because because by virtue of Trump, I mean, when you think about it, Trump could have said nothing. He could have literally said nothing, and he would have been better served than what happened tonight. One hundred percent, perfectly said. So listen, there is so much going on, and by the time this thing even is live and people are listening to it, hopefully by tomorrow afternoon, uh, there, there, there's probably going to be some so much news that it's going to make my head spin that we're not uh, recording like in real time and 24-7. <laughs> but uh, we'll wrap this up for now, but let me just ask one last question, and then I want to yeah. get a quick plug from you as well. Um, what, what, what do you think that this means for – the future of Trump. Let's set aside the, the the Russian investigation. Let's just let's just assume that that you know that that flames out and, and there's nothing that comes from that in terms of impeachment or you know, charges brought upon him or, or what have you. What does this mean for him? We kind of alluded to 2018, but long term, does this affect Trump or is, is that does that 35 to 38 percent of the people that support him does that hold strong? Does that embolden them, or does this put him in real danger? Of being a one-term president, uh, yes, that thirty-five to thirty-eight percent will hold strong. Uh, that that portion of the electorate, insofar as being made aware of of President Trump and all of his horrific glory, they are a lost cause. Uh, it's just they're not going. They're not. The the needle will never move for them, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's number one. Number two, does it put Donald Trump in real danger? Yes, the hell yes, it does. Why? Because thirty-five percent is not who you can govern for, right? And so what we saw tonight was a referendum on Trumpism, as opposed to 
what we saw a year ago, a little over a year ago, which was, you know, who won the last presidential election? Actually, it was apathy, right? Because like 51% of people or whatever just stayed home, right? And, and so what was that? It was, it was a whole bunch of people who'd said, well, whether it's box A or box B, it's all the same, right? Well, now, one of those boxes has been filled in. So Donald Trump as president does not exist as an abstract concept. He exists as an actual reality. And we've seen the, 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 just the, the trail of, of crap that he has left in his wake. In less than a year, it's easy to forget. He has not been president for even a year yet, and yet we're all aging in dog years. Yeah, absolutely. Right? It's, it's remarkable to think that we, we think a year, and like, no, a year was the election. Yeah. It's January and, 20th before he was sworn in and, and here right. we are. Right. Here we are in December. So, so, so look at, look at, look at what we saw, right? Uh, the people who showed up and voted were an activated majority. And, and, you know, obviously we talked about the black vote. I'm fairly certain the women vote. Uh, will have proved decisive, and I see no reason to think that a year from now that will change with the midterms. And and I think the Democrats, if they get their head on straight, the Democrats. See, this is the problem. The <laughs> Democrats have this this strategy of oh, we can't compete, so we won't even try. You won in Alabama. You won in the heart of Trump country, a state that Trump won by twenty eight points, and they did it by mobilizing their base yeah their base so millennials so, college kids minorities especially blacks that's exactly right right so so uh you know obviously president obama was out there uh making robocalls that certainly helped hey hey, uh, hey can you, let's hit pause for two seconds i'm sorry but isn't that pretty awesome that at yeah. the same day trump and obama had, had robocalls going out i just love that i just love it you yeah know. i you know i i will never lose faith in 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 the decency of, of people even though at times my god it, it you really you wonder uh i i will believe up until our next presidential election that this current spell that we're under right now is an aberration in this country's history we have you know the the founding fathers wrote in uh to our constitution a break lever every two years you know, so so maybe the ship of state moves at a glacial pace, but that's a good thing, especially uh, given what we're seeing right now. We have a chance to pull out of uh, the, sort of the dive that we're in. We're going to have a chance next fall, and then again uh, two years after that. I, you know, I I think that if we're ta- if we're looking ahead to the next presidential election, I don't know who the Democrats have who could who could uh, be a viable national candidate, but um, you know, I. I see no reason to think that anybody but Trump uh, can't be a galvanizing force, you know? I think that's perfectly stated, man. It's going to be all downhill from here, Zachy, so we'll end it. That's I love. Thank you for that. You just kind of put a bow on this little conversation. I, I was going to open the door about some potential 2020s, but you know what? We're going to, we're, we're going to do here on Left Shoe Politics uh, podcast, an uh, end-of-year wrap, and Zachy has agreed to join us on that, and so we'll talk about... 2020 prospects amongst other things so all right my friend i really appreciate you doing this short notice i know you're on your phone doing this and just thank you real quick let's do a let's do a quick plug you and i and you and i both saw star wars yesterday so you want to plug that or anything else in terms i know your review by the way of the last jedi is fantastic oh thank you so much i really really like it where can people find that uh, yeah, if you go to my website, zakiscorner.com, that's Z-A-K-I-S corner, uh, you can check it out there. It's it's the top post there and you know, probably remain up or near the top in the next uh, week or so. Uh, obviously, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on Twitter and Instagram at, at Zachy's Corner also. And uh, the movie film podcast, which I co-host with my friend Brian Hall, will be doing our Last Jedi spoiler conversation this coming week. And currently we have up a Phantom Menace Episode 1 Star Wars podcast. Uh, uh, commentary track uh where we talk through the movie as we as we watch it so that might be something fun to do to listen to is that one going to break my heart if i listen to it well you know i don't know <laughs> you know I'll so, you. I, so our audience knows here i'm a i'm a star wars prequel defender i'm a i'm a dying breed i know but anyway 
I mean, you know, here's here's what I'll say. I know you're you're a defender of of aspects of those films, but I don't think you uh, suffer under any any illusions of them being uh, particular works of genius. I mean, you acknowledge that they're problematic, even while having sort of sparks of genius in them. Absolutely, particularly that one. So that's all. I'm yeah. So so I, I I it's 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 not us, you know, taking a, a steamer all over the movies for two two hours and twenty minutes. However, that being said, it's not a love letter either. <laughs> no, I don't. No, I don't. I can't give that one a love letter. But anyway, so if you guys are Star Wars fans, go see the Star Wars: The Last Jedi. I'm going to have my official review up on BatmanOnFilm.com on Thursday, which is the date of that is the Thursday, Thursday. What is the date of Thursday? That would be the 14th of December. The 14th. I, I need to see it twice, Zachy. I'm glad I'm not a uh, – first of all, I don't write anywhere near nearly as well as you do, but I'm also <laughs> glad I'm not a professional critic because <laughs> you you were sort of obligated to get a review up this morning. And I, on the other hand, could stand back and go, "I'm going to go see it again before I write mine." <laughs> you know, so yeah, it was it was funny because because uh, the embargo lifted at 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific time in the morning, and so I woke up at like 5 a.m. just to to pull my thoughts together because that was the only time I really had to to I needed like six hours of sleep to be able to think about it, you know. Um, and I'm still thinking about it to be honest. So my review is kind of just my. Uh, impressions, you know. Sure, that's just a, a snapshot in time. I am really right. looking looking forward to seeing how I feel about it after seeing it a second time. I'm, I hear you. I'm, Me I'm, too. Yeah, absolutely. Well, again, listen. Congratulations for uh, to you and I, our pe- two guys that love our country and want to see good things happen to it. This is a great night for us. It's a great night for the people of Alabama. It's a great night for the United States of America, and that is just an absolutely bold true statement coming from my heart i really believe that sending that man to the united states senate's senate would have put a stain on the republican party that i would like to see rebound and be a decent party again and just Mm -hmm. american politics in general so thank you alabama and i'll never say this but i'm going to say it tonight i'm texas longhorn guy over here i'm just going to say roll tide baby (laughs) <laughs> All right. Well, left Shoe Politics, you can find us on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, wherever great podcasts are found, on Facebook, and over on the Twitter at Left Shoe Politic. Not politics, because I ran out of characters. Anyway, thank you so much. This is Rick Shoe. Michael Malloy and Jeremy Grookley will be around soon enough for whatever they're up to, and I'll have announcer Rachel take us out. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this episode of our Left Shoe Politics podcast. You can find us on Twitter at Left Shoe Politics. Follow the Facebook page at facebook.com slash left shoe politics and the LSP website leftshoepolitics.com. Search for our channel on YouTube, Stitcher, and Google Play. 